On Tuesday, police in Turkey raided houses and offices of news agencies, detaining at least 38 people, many of them journalists. According to local media, the arrests are part of a probe into links to an outlawed group, the Kurdistan Communities Union. Human rights and media groups have condemned the raids, which they say are part of an ongoing effort to restrict press freedom in the country. FSRN's Hermione G. reports from Istanbul. If you go to any newspaper stand in Istanbul, you'll likely have a choice of six or seven different papers, often many, many more. There's Sabah, Hurriyet, Dunya, Radikal, Jumhurriyet, to name just a few. There are even a couple of English language papers, the Hurriyet Daily News and today's Zaman. But don't be fooled, says Asla Tunj, Associate Professor of Communications and Media at Istanbul's Bilgi University. Press freedom, she says, is not doing well in Turkey. From one to ten, it's like three or four. But I think that's the you know weakest part of the whole country right now. I mean, if you compare to economy, for example, press freedom, freedom of expression, I mean, the situation is really bad. Of course, when a foreign journalist you know sees all those different outlets, they say, you know, what are you talking about? You have tons of different outlets, but this is not true. Because they're basically, that's the same voice over and over again. Part of the problem, Tunç explains, is that the ruling Justice and Development Party, or AKP, changed the media ownership laws following its election in 2002. When they came to power in 2002, uh, only Islamist newspapers were supporting the AKP government. But now there is a very partisan uh, media structure, and they are not necessarily Islamists. Now more than 60% is pro-government. So there is no diversity, there is no opposition, and if they see any opposition, actually they punish them. The 2011 Press Freedom Index places Turkey at the bottom of all 25 Western European countries. The International Press Institute says Turkey leads the world when it comes to the number of journalists in prison, topping even China and Iran, with close to 90 Turkish journalists currently behind bars. There are also more than 700 other cases pending that could lead to even more journalists being imprisoned. Erol Ondorolu is the Istanbul correspondent for Reporters Without Borders. He says that the government's use of the judicial system to prosecute its critics has a chilling effect on the whole society. This is a kind of uh, rhetoric, this is a kind of speech uh, adopted by uh, government members. And I think that it's, uh, you are not only targeting one journalist, you are all at the same time targeting a public opinion, one part of public opinion. Ondrolu was speaking in November outside Istanbul's central courthouse, where the trial of Ahmed Shuk, Nedim Şener and eight other journalists was taking place. Representatives of the European Federation of Journalists and other press freedom groups also turned out to support Shuk and Şener, both well-known, award-winning journalists who were arrested in March on charges of abetting terrorism. They say their only offence was to raise questions about the relationship between the police force and the religious Gülen movement. Since 2008, more than 500 people, including academics and military officials, as well as many journalists, have been arrested in connection with the so-called Agenikon case, an alleged ultra-nationalist plot to overthrow the government. Although the case has prompted much debate over the last few years, with government critics saying it's being used to settle scores and silence opposition, the arrests of Shuk and Shener raised the level of protest within the country and grabbed the attention of the international media. Asla Tunj, who works with Shuk at Bilgi University, explains. This shows that this is outrageous. The other people, I don't know. I mean, we can never sure. But those two people especially, Ahmed Shuk and Nedim Shener, people understood, you know, the actual situation. I mean, the lack of press freedom in Turkey. With the others, there was always skepticism. Maybe they did something wrong. Or maybe they were terrorists. You know, nobody knew. But now, those two decent people, good journalists... Uh, well known, are in jail. I mean, he is my colleague, and it's unbelievable that he's in prison right now. I mean, anybody can be in prison. Most of the journalists in prison today are being held on terrorism related charges, either in connection to the Agenikon case or charged with promoting the cause of the armed Kurdish group, the PKK. Government supporters point to Turkey's stringent penal code as the real culprit and argue that once the country's new constitution is in place, there will be fewer restrictions on the press. And certainly, Turkish laws have served to limit press freedom in the country for decades, as well as the strict anti-terrorism laws, discouraging military service, insulting Turkishness, and referring to the 1915 Armenian massacre as a genocide, 
are all criminal offences. But it will take more than a new constitution to bring real press freedom to Turkey, says Asla Tunj. It's very hard to change the structure radically with the laws and constitutions. My hope is to have a more open and more democratic media uh, scene. But they created a culture of fear. So even if the law is there to protect you, nobody will write. Uh, because, you know, the, the good journeys are out anyway. So the partisans are in, so they know the rules. I mean, uh, the whole thing is becoming more monolithic. Uh, so it will go on and on. Uh, I mean, the mainstream media is, is done, it's gone. So the next step is the internet for them. Shuk and Shener will be back in the Istanbul courthouse on December 26. In the meantime, the two journalists have asked the European Court of Human Rights to review their case. Hermione G, FSRN, Istanbul.